Why, hello there, my lovely friends, family, and art lovers alike. Um, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a sketch with me, draw with me, paint with me type video. I'm just doing a little bit of a sped up um, version of this painting that um, I made. I decided that I would just do like a start to finish, full on, all the way through, sketch it out, paint it, finishing touches, everything, all in one video. So obviously I couldn't make it full length. It would be like four and a half hours long. So instead I sped it up and um, here is the result. So you can kind of see here. Um, I'm actually doing a sketch of this uh, portrait. I'm trying to practice my my sketching skills, my portraiture, because if I don't practice enough, I get rusty. Um, oftentimes when I'm doing like portraits for commissions or, or clients or whatever, a lot of times I do like trace from either like a printout photo or um, like a projector tracing just so that I can make sure that I get the best possible likeness. Um, but I do love to draw just, <clears throat> you know, from from my vision or from, from viewing things or whatever. I like to draw from life. I like to draw people like portraits from just looking at a person or a photo. And so that's kind of what I did with this one. Um, it's obviously uh, not going to be as good as it would be if I traced it, but you know, that's kind of the point. So I'm trying to make, make something a little bit different. So I did the sketch with a red um, pencil. The pencils that I use are, this is like a pencil, uh, colored pencil lead that you can get for mechanical pencils for these pilot pencils. And I really like red. I feel like it works the best, especially with skin tones. Um, but I also just like it. I don't know why I like the red so much. It's, I wish kind of that it was a little bit darker sometimes that the lead was a little bit softer, but, um, it erases relatively well and it blends in with the paint really well. So that's really what, what, um, I like about it the most, I think when it comes to doing like an under sketch for a watercolor painting and even for other, other paint as well, it probably would work really well. But, um, I like to be able to see my lines underneath when I'm painting with like oils and acrylics and because they cover the lines better, you can use a darker under sketch, but for watercolor, because it is so transparent, I sometimes don't like to see those pencil marks. And so, um, so yeah, I draw with the red, the red pencil. Um, so as you can see, I'm putting up a lot of layers of paint here. Um, the paper that I'm using is like, a an inexpensive brand that I got on Amazon. It's called Art Beak. I don't know. It's so weird, but, um, I got this booklet, uh, of, I think it's like 11 by 14 paper. It's pretty big. And um, I think it was like 50 sheets of 100% cotton paper. And it was only like $20. So it was really, really reasonable. Um, and I just wanted to try it out. I was like, well, it says it's 100% cotton. I mean, you know, sometimes 100% cotton is really like all that makes the difference. And sometimes it matters what kind of sizing is used and all that stuff. But um, I do like this paper. I don't, it's not my favorite, but I can't tell if that's just because it's not hot press. <laughs> it's a cold press paper and it's textured and I don't always love the texture, especially when I want to, um, draw over it with like colored pencils or, you know, even ink sometimes like with a, with like fine liners or something. It, it just creates, uh, problems when I'm trying to get very fine details. Um, for this one, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't use, uh, any color pencils afterwards. I just kind of used the paint and tried to get the details with the paint. And then I kind of also wanted to leave some of, um, just, you know, the cool effect that you get with the watercolor paint and, um, leave it, leave it the way that it was with that. Just, I, I like the, some of the abstractions and some of the like more subtle, um, suggestive marks that it leaves just, just with shadows and things like that, especially in the hair. And, um, later on you'll see in the, in the sweater <clears throat> with just like random shapes. So, um, so here's this, I don't even know why I leave the eyes for last. A lot of people start with the eyes, but I leave the eyes for last. And then the whole time she looks like a weird, like zombie person because <laughs> she looks like she has no eyes. But, um, I think it's because with watercolor, I want to work from light to dark. That's just the way that I do it because I'm layering so much. And I feel like if I put the dark layers on first, that it's, you know, going backwards and I might smear it or I might, you know, the, the water might, um, the, it might smear a little bit or it might blend too much or whatever with some of the wet paper or the wet 
colors. So I wanted it to completely dry before I went in with the really dark, uh, dark like blacks and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I've made a conscious conscious decision not to use any black paint. And actually, recently I've been kind of playing around and practicing with um, just using like primaries um, in my watercolor paints. I bought a set of Daniel Smith watercolors, which as as we all know are extremely expensive watercolor <laughs> paints, but for a reason. I mean, obviously. They're very high quality, their pigmentation is amazing, the light fastness, the, you know, archival quality, everything about it, you know, there's a reason why um, they're expensive. It's because they're, you know, a quality uh, paint. But, um, you know, I can't afford to buy every color there is, so I bought this set on Amazon, I think, or I had a gift card um, of the Daniel Smith watercolors that was just a primary set. So I've just been using those, and just by mixing those primary colors, basically I can get every color in this painting. The only color that I added to this was um, Opera Rose, which I had from, I think, Van Gogh, um, because I don't have that color in the Daniel Smith set. But I love Opera Rose. It's like my favorite. Obviously, it's like neon pink. So um, I did use a little bit of that just in like the some of the highlighted areas on her um, skin and um, <clears throat> the rest of it though is just those primary colors just blended together. And then I went in with this white gouache. As you can see, I used the white gouache for some of the hair just because, um, in the beginning I was going to try to leave some white spaces for the hair, but I, I just kind of like it better when it looks more clean when I put in the gouache afterwards. Um, instead of having those weird bumpy lines sometimes that you get when you try to leave a white space. And uh, yeah, so I, so I went in with white gouache. Now, once I got to this point, I was planning on just being done, but after a, a minute, I was looking, I was like, no, it needs a little bit more detail. So I decided to put in some like flowers on her sweater. I don't know. I was like, what, what does it need? It needs a little bit of detail here. So I added some flowers. I added some little, um, some little like white dots um, just to make it sort of a pattern in there. And then I felt like it still was missing something. And so what I thought of was like maybe something in the background. Maybe I could do like a border, like wallpaper or something. And I was like, oh, she looks like she would like bumblebees. I don't know why. <laughs> but, um, you know, I put, I put this like thin wash in the background just so that, so that it wasn't like plain white. I wanted to highlight her hair a little bit more. And then I was like, okay, uh, I looked up some patterns. I did some little sketches of bees and stuff like that. You'll see in a second. I put it on there. There we go. So <laughs> the little bees that I sketched out, um, I was just trying to see like where, where it might go. So I put some on tracing paper just so I can move around the paper. Um, and then decided like where I was going to put it. And, um, you know, so, so I sketched a couple of bees on there and, uh, I thought the bumblebee was really cute. <laughs> so after I painted this little one, I was like, oh, she needs another one. So I decided to um, make a second one and I painted it uh, down lower, like sitting on her sweater. Um, the second one turned out a little bit bigger than I meant for it to be, but that's okay, whatever. It's, it is what it is. It's still kind of cute. Um, and then after, after I did that, I was like, well, what about the background? So I was looking for some like kind of pattern or something and I thought I would just do like a, like a black and white sketches of bee pattern or something, like a really simple bee. But then when I was looking for ideas, I just thought maybe I should just do like a honeycomb pattern. And I know these are not honeybees, so I understand that. But, you know, bees, everybody associates with, with honeycombs or honey. So um, so what I did was I just found like a, a hexagon pattern, a honeycomb pattern, and I printed it out and then I traced it um, with my light box. So you can see here I already traced it in red pencil and then I went over those lines here with this gold gel pen. I just wanted the metallic aspect of it. I like the gold for the background. I didn't want it to be like black or like something too contrasty. And then I just sort of decided to fill in a couple of those little honeycombs with honey. So I used this uh, gorgeous gold metallic watercolor that I got. It was like a handmade watercolor set that I bought from Amazon. And I filled in a couple of those and then um, Voila. So this is what the painting looks like when it was finished. I really love this painting, actually. I love the way it turned out. I really loved making it from start to finish, and I hope you guys did too. So give it a like, give me a subscribe, and um, thank you for watching. Bye!